Hello everybody and welcome to chapter number five in statics. I'm Professor Algarra and I'm going to be talking about different things but something very important that you need to know is that chapter number five I consider this chapter to be an extension of chapter number four. We'll be talking more about free body diagrams, about equations of equilibrium, um, you know rigid bodies and things like that. Okay so conditions for a rigid body in, contra in, in contrast to the forces on a particle, the forces on a rigid body are not usually concurrent and it may cause rotation of the body. For a rigid body to be in equilibrium, the net force as well as the net moment um, need to be zero around an arbitrary point, you know, being an arbitrary any point in the, in the body. So basically what we're doing, we're now moving into more um, real life examples in which we will have to apply these equations in order to perform a statical design. That's how I call it, statics design. Um, you will have certain conditions and certain elements and then you will perform um, the equations on equilibrium in order to move with your design. So, simplifying the way we look at stuff, it's very important, right? So, in real life you will have machinery, um, elements, uh, columns, you know, beams, things like that. In order for us to study what is happening to a certain element, we need to simplify that so we can apply forces and reactions to that element. So that's, and, and now I'm going to, you know, introduce you to something that is called idealized model, which is something that we use to analyze the physical item in a, in a simpler way. Then after we have that idealized moment, we can then draw um, you know, the reactions on it so we can produce the free body diagram. And finally, apply the equations of equilibrium in order to solve for unknown. Which equations the ones that are given at the beginning? You know, sum of forces equals zero, sum of moment equals zero. So that's, that's just the base definition of statics and everything that we have learned from chapter one to four. So something very important very very important in mechanics and, and you will see more of this as you move in your professional career uh, there are some support reactions in the 2D studies you know and there is a huge table with different supports and each one of them will have um, different components what we're doing here is how to move or how to how we can place reactions into the free body diagram right based on the simplified configuration that you have on one side of the elements, right? So for example, we have fixed support, smooth pin or hinge and roller. Basically what you're doing with this, let's say for example, in the fixed support, you have the wall. Once you remove the wall in order to draw your free body diagram, you have to think about what the wall is doing to the element. When something is fixed to the wall is basically you know, fixed, so it's not able to rotate or translate. So therefore, you have to you have to add in order to remove the wall. You have to add the reactions and the moment that the wall is doing to your element. When you go to the second example right here in the smooth in the hinge, right, um, the bar it's able to rotate like this, and that's why there's no moment because it's able to rotate. But since it's attached to the ground right it will not be able to move in x and y so that's why you add your reactions in x and y and when you have a roller right it's able to go like this you know in this direction and it's also able to go like this but it's not able to go into or or, or off the ground and because of that you will have a reaction that points right to your element this is very important, you know, and, and I know it takes time for you to memorize it, okay? I've been working with this for a lot of years and that's why I know it and I know how to explain it, but you have a table that will help you at the beginning so you can get used to everything, okay? But if rotation is prevented, a couple moment is exerted on the body in the opposite direction. If a support prevents translation, then a force is developed you know, in the opposite direction. That's what you're doing, but I just, I'm, I just gave you at the beginning an explanation of these statements. So, free body diagrams. 
Once you have your idealized model, what you need to know is that the final stage will be to create your free body diagram. And I call that the final state because up to this point, if you do things in the right way, applying the equations of equilibrium shouldn't be a problem. But if you do your free body diagram, if you go from here to here with errors, then forget about it. Your exercise is done, your analysis is done, and therefore you will get the wrong um, you know, results. And if that's the case, that could delay your design, you could fail an exam, you know, so many things can happen. But at the end of the day, when you become a real engineer, this is very important because you are designing buildings, you're designing structures, and this is quite important. So coming from the idealized model to a free body diagram is a huge step. So that's why I will advise you to spend time on the idealized moment so you can study the reactions that could be possibly created. So if we keep reading of what it says, it says that you have to draw an outline shape. Imagine the body to be isol uh, isolated and cut free from its constraint and draw its outline shape. Um, show the external forces in couple moments. You know, this includes apply load, support reactions, etc. Okay? Something very important so you can get, um, you know, something consistent don't forget to label your reactions you know if you are a starting point um, a beam that is a and then b don't forget that depends on the support you will have some reactions in these points if you have reactions in the x and the y direction so you will have you know a reaction bx and by you will have a reaction a x and a y okay being organized it's very important especially when you have a huge system with multiple you know multiple beams or multiple elements so the equations of equilibrium we went over these so about it a body is subjected subjected to a system of forces that lie on the x and y plane when in equilibrium the net force and net moment acting on a body they must be zero so our formulas our formulas for you know equations of equilibrium will be this one sum of forces in the x direction sum of forces in the y direction and sum of moment um, about or around an O point will be equal to zero okay those ones are the most commonly used um, as we're learning how to simplify stuff, you know, we're, we're basically taking something very complicated and trying to simplify it to a point in which we can apply calculations. And that will introduce you to something that is called two force members and three force members. But I'm going to concentrate only on the two force members. So the solution to some equilibrium problems can be simplified if we recognize members that are subjected to forces at only two points. Okay, A and B, for example. If we apply the equations of equilibrium to such a member. Um, we can quickly we can quickly realize that the resultant forces at A and B must be equals in magnitude and act in the opposite direction along a line joining points A and B. Guys, this is a, another example in engineering when you have a lot of words and you just need to try to find a way to see it in a in an easy way so you can apply it you know if you have an element that is subjected only to two forces and those forces goes into the same line of action you will realize that instead of having fa and fb you can have only one f and therefore that will simplify your equations because instead of having one instead of having one and two unknowns now you're going to have only one and that will decrease one of the equations and at the end of the day that will help you solve your system The steps, and these steps are not straightforward, if I'm honest with you. And, I, and in my classes, I allow my students to go a little bit off these steps, you know, because that's what an engineer will do, find multiple solutions to a problem. So if not given, you have to establish an X and Y coordinate system. That's very important, okay? Then after the, and as far as the class goes, most of the time I will give you that X and Y coordinate system because I'm pretty sure when you move down the road in your professional career, you will have to do it yourself. But as you're learning right now with the initial concepts, I have to help you as much as I can. Then you have to draw your free body diagram that we just explained it. And then you have to apply the equations of equilibrium in order to solve the unknowns. Some important and very important notes. 
um, and I'm just gonna read them, um, is if there are more unknowns than the number of independent equations, then we have a statically in, indeterminate, sorry for my accent, situation. We cannot solve these problems using just a static, so we will have to apply something else. What? Don't worry about it, because like I said, this is the very first engineering class that you have. In order to, in, in the order in which we apply the, the equations might affect the simplicity of the solution. For example, if we have two unknown vertical forces and one unknown in the, horizon, in the horizontal line, then maybe doing the sum of forces in the x-direction will be easier because then you can get the value of the reaction and you can use that to solve the following equation, which could be sum of forces in the y-direction. And this, it's just given by practice. As you do more and more exercises, you will realize when and how to solve it. I have a, a, you know, an example ready for this. So if the answer for an, for an unknown comes out as negative number, and we went through this in the previous chapter, then the assumed, um, then the assumed direction will be the opposite. So if you assume, for example, sum of forces in the x direction saying that this way is positive and then you get that that your final element it will be equals to minus whatever you know then that minus sign is telling you that the direction that you assume was wrong and therefore it goes on the other side like i said i have another example for all of this and there we go so we're given with this example, okay? We have a rod or we have a beam right here, AB, and then we have something, another element that is, uh, you know, DC and then this guy, okay? They're asking us to find the support reactions at A and C, okay? So what is the plan? As I just laid it out in the previous, you know, slides, we're going to put x and y and x i'm sorry x and y axis in the horizontal and vertical directions so we can go like this right x and y then we need um to find if there are any two force members and as you can see it we have one here that has a reaction and another one here therefore those forces are equal and i'm going to tell you how we can do how we can use that to our advantage then we need to draw the free body diagram and finally we just need to apply the so now we have you know the picture right here and then we have the free body diagram but the the real question here is how we go from one to the other and as we just explained we will um start adding the reactions or removing the elements and then adding the reactions instead so for example right here at a we have two reactions because it's a support and then we have the force right here and then we have the force that comes from cd which is this one right here this is a two element but i'm you can do it that way or you can do it this way if you want to at the end of the day it doesn't matter uh which way you choose because you will uh confirm that with the sign of your final answer okay so if you get a negative value then it's the opposite direction of the you know compared to the one that you assume initially and if you get a positive value then it, you you choose the you chose the right one so as we you know move into this particular exercise you have right here 45 degrees and the reason why you have 45 degrees is because right here you can form a triangle and when you have this side to be equal in distance or, or in measurement to that side you will have 45 degrees and that's you know just common knowledge so now the real question would be you know what should i do in order to start finding the unknowns so the exercise was asking me to calculate the, the support reactions at a and c so basically right here or right here so then the, the question will become like, where should I do moment? You know, at first to find uh, my reactions, do I do it at B, do I do it at C or A? Well, the real question, the real answer here to that question will be that it doesn't matter if you do it on A and C because you will have this same number of unknowns. But what about if I do it at B? If I do at B, you know, right here at C, I have two reactions. One, 
in the x direction and one in the y direction. All the forces that are, you know, in the x direction, they don't cause any moment, right? The only ones that will cause moments, it's the ones that are in the in the y direction, as you can see. So if I do a B, F, C, D, Y will cause moment and A, Y will cause moment. I don't know any one of those. So doing moment at B will not make sense. But then if you do moment at C, then you can ping at C and the only one doing moment will be A, Y, that's one way. Or if you do it at A, the only one doing moment will be F, C, Y, F, C, D, Y, okay? So therefore, in my case, and that's what I always do, I always go with the one and, and I'll do moment in the one that has more unknowns. In this case, A, Y, and A, X, you know, I don't know it. So I will do sum of moment at point A, all right? So if I do that, then I will get the sum of moments and the A. And then what is very important is your sign convention. I always use the right hand. So if it's going, you know, outside of the of the screen, then it'll be positive. Or therefore, I will have F C D sine of 45 that multiplies the distance. So from here to here, I have 1.5 right and that is positive because it's going with my sign convention and then the four kilonewtons which is going in the opposite direction therefore is negative so four that multiplies three right and this is equal to zero if i solve for fd I will fcd i will get that fcd sorry this is sign of 45 so fcd will be equals to 11.31 kilonewtons that's fine now I have I, I just found this guy so if you want to find now um, how much is AX and, a, and, and AY all you have to do is sumo forces in the X direction equals zero and sumo forces in the Y direction equals zero so I'll go first with the sumo forces in the X direction going positive that way you know If I do that, I will have um, AX plus 11.31, which is FCD, that multiplies cosine of 45, and this is equal to zero. So if I then solve for AX, I will get that AX is equal to minus a kilonewtons and this is you know a good example so I assume that positive is going into this direction if I got a negative value it means that a x is actually a kilonewtons going to the left you know if you leave it as minus eight kilonewtons that's universal language among engineers so I will know exactly what you mean by that but I want you to do things in the right way so just make sure you put the, the arrow in the right direction and then finally sum of forces in the y direction going positive like this is equal to zero so then i will get a y um and then i have um minus four kilonewtons right and then right here i also have plus um fcd which is 11.31 that multiplies, if I'm not mistaken, is the sine, yeah, sine of 45, and that's equal to zero. So if you solve those unknowns, you will realize that AY is equal to minus four kilonewtons, or as I just told you, it's four kilonewtons going in the opposite direction of the one that I assumed. And that's it. So you just solved the exercise, you, you found, you know, all the external forces or the reactions that were needed. If we go back to, you know, we needed the reactions at point A and point U. And with that, we finally found the reactions at point A and C. Now let's go with, a, you know, another one, a little hotter per se. So the beam is supported by brothers at A and, and you know, and at B. Now we need to find the reactions at point A and at point B. 
So what would be, you know, the way to go? So at first we need to establish an X and Y axis system, then we need to draw the free body diagram and then apply the equations to solve my unknowns. So very simple, I already had, you know, the free body diagram and something very important. At the end of chapter number four, we learn how to convert distributed loads into single loads. And you usually have to do that to simplify your calculations. That's what happened here. So from this rectangle, if you multiply, you know, base times height, which is given by the three kilonewtons, you will get 12 kilonewtons. And then that goes right in the middle. So instead of having the distributed load, now you have a single load, which makes, which will make your calculations even easier. You have a normal force right here because you have a surface in contact. In contact. So some people will call just a reaction. You know, let's just go with like the normal. Uh, force that we have exerting on B because there is contact between them then we have my supporter loads right here and that's why I have BY and BX so once you have that set up you know everything becomes easier but something very important and this is with physics you know how do we get the 30 degrees and you know I usually use this method so if I have a little box that will go with inclination that box will have an x and y direction if now you can find similarities with the drawing that you have you will see that you have 30 degrees right here because it comes from this but now if you want to transfer that you know angle into your exercise you can break this one with four more lines and then find the equivalent lines that reflects the drawings that you have on the bottom so you have an angle here, then you don't have it here, you have it here, you don't have it here, and here, not here, and then here. When you have that, now you can perform your calculations because you will form a triangle right here with the angle present in that particular triangle. And with that, you can find its component in Y and in X direction by multiplying, um, you know, that magnitude by cosine and sine of theta. So then the next question would be, I know that I have to apply equations of equilibrium. So sum of, for, sum of moments, um, the sum of forces in the y direction and sum of forces in the x direction. So the real question is where do I do moment, you know? And like I explained you in the previous exercise, I will go with the one that has more unknown. So I will do moments at B. So that way with just sum of moment, I will be able to find my normal force sum of moments at B and again this is the way I want it to be positive but you can do it differently if you want to we have this is equals to zero and then we will have that minus N A cosine of theta of theta right and that multiplies 4 plus 3 cosine of 30 okay how did I get that so don't, don't forget that you have a component right here and you have another component right here and each one of those components will make moments so the one that we're calculating will be this distance so if this is 4 then that's why you have 4 plus 3 cosine of 30 in order to find this distance and if you want to find this one then it'll be obviously sum. Then after that, I'll go with minus N A sine of 30. That multiplies 3 sine of 30, which is the distance. What else do I have? I also have the force, which is plus 12 that multiplies the distance and the distance will be obviously 2 and this is equal to 0 we have to solve for NA and then NA will be equals to 3.71 kilonewtons and please double check my math you know what is very important here is that you realize what is the sign you know of your moments so for example if we focus between b and this one right here the one in the y direction if you ping at b 
then you will get a movement that goes in the opposite direction of the one that you assume therefore this one is negative and if now you ping at B and then you just focus on this one it will be the exact same thing it will produce a movement like that and that's why you have the negative value that's the key with these exercises that you realize that that's what's happening so now I know that NA it's equals to 3.71 Boom. So now what we need to calculate or what we have to do is do sum of forces in the x direction equals zero. My my forces in the x direction will be 3.71, which is Na that multiplied sine of 30 and then minus Bx and that is equals to zero then if I solve for Bx I'll get that Bx is equals to minus 1.86 kilonewtons or 1.86 kilonewtons going into the opposite direction so then sum of forces in the y direction is equals to zero where this is the direction and then for sum of forces in the y direction, I will get 3.71 that multiplies cosine of 30. And then we have plus minus 12, sorry, plus by, and that's equals to zero. If I solve for by, then I get that by is equals to 8.78 kilo newtons and that's it so with that you get your unknowns reactions and everything and that's how you solve this particular exercise so now we're going into support reactions in 3d so this particular exercise or this particular topic even though uh, it's part of statics i wouldn't expect something like this on the exam but I want to go over it so I can explain it to you and I will give you an exercise based on what we have taught. So a few, a few examples of supports um, are shown above. Other supports reactions are given in your textbooks like the same way for 2D. As a general rule, if a support prevents translation of a, of a body in a given direction, then a reaction force acting in the opposite direction is developed on the body. Also, if rotation is prevented, a couple moment then is exerted on the body by the support. It's simple as that. It's the exact same thing that we had in 2D, but now it's applying 3D. The, the complex thing behind this is that now we have to add another axis to our calculations, you know. So before we used to have sumo forces in the X and Y direction, now we need to also have sumo forces in the C direction. When it comes to the moment, we only had, you know, a moment uh, along one of the axes, so now we need to uh, have also sumo moment into the X in the Y direction. Now we're talking about more complex exercises, and like I said, you don't have to, to expect one or two exercises in the exam. I'm not going to be including these on the exam. That's what I'm trying to tell. All right, so now we have the exercise, like I said, and I'm just going to show you a few relationships and how to use, how do we use um, this definition in a 3D environment. So at first we need to look for an established X, Y, and Z axis then after that we need to draw a free body diagram on the rod right and then of the rod and at that point then we also we will also have to analyze the support or the thrust the thrust bearing that we have at a and then do our calculations and perform the equations so these type of exercises are a little bit more analytical you know so you have to take a lot of things into consideration when it comes to your final strategy to attack this exercise or to solve this exercise. So, the first thing to realize is that you have that bearing, right, that is preventing your part from, from moving and rotating around the Z and the, and the X direction. Don't forget 
that these guys right here, M A Z and M A X, it's a couple moment that is preventing the VAR from going into those directions. But those ones have value, okay? Are they zero or not zero? That will be given by the equations or the analysis that we give. Those are not the same as the moments created by the forces, okay? Don't forget that this is a coupled moment, but you also have the moments that are created due to the forces around to the x directions and due to the forces around the y direction and due to the forces around the c direction. That's what I want you to remember and not get confused by that. Remember that the, the sum of all the moments will be coupled moments plus the moments due to forces. All right, once we have that analysis, we just have to, you know, build our free body diagram because it's free to move in the y direction, then there's no um, reaction that is resisting the movement and there's no um, couple moment of couple because it's also able to rotate. So that's why we only have a z, um, a x, m, a x, and m, a z, which are the couple moments. So now, what we need to realize is that we don't have, you know, they're asking us to calculate everything and all the reactions and moments that are right there at A, and obviously we also need to calculate F, B, C. So now, you know, the first question would be like, what do I do first? How do I start getting these unknowns? The first thing that you need to realize is that you don't have any forces acting in the X direction. So if you do a simple, you know, sum of forces in the X direction, you will realize, and this is equal to zero, that the only thing that you have is AX, and this is equal to zero. So that's your first value. So AX is zero, and then now you don't have to, you know, worry about anything else. But then the next assumption, and I'm pretty sure you will go with me, is that I will go with the sum of forces in the C direction because all of the forces are pointing in that direction, in the Z1. So if I, if, I, if I perform that calculation, you know, sum of forces in the Z direction um, will be equal to zero. And if I go with this as my sign convention, then I just have to put all the forces that are involved in this, which is AZ, you know, from, from, the, bearing, from the bearing, and then plus FBC and then minus 80, which is, you know, this guy right here, and this is equal to zero, and I will call that my first equation. So now I need another equation that I can, you know, that I can use in order to do this. Approaches will be different. If, I, if right now you're thinking of a different approach than my approach, that's totally fine, and at the end of the day, what matters to me is that you use your knowledge to solve this exercise. But I just realized that there is also no moment in the Z, in the Z direction because um, there's no movement in the X. So for, for us to have a, a moment in the Z direction, we need to have any forces that are acting like this. And since we don't have any, then MAZ, it's also equals to zero. And now I have another one that I just found. So I just need another calculation that will relate a Z with everything. And I have two options here. I can either go uh, with um, sum of moments, you know, because I already went through sum of moments in the Z and the X. So what about now if we start using the sum of moments? So I will use my first one as the sum of moments around the y direction and why is that because when i look at the y broad you know i see that i have forces that are actually making these bar to rotate like this and because of that i can i, I will have more um more data in order to assemble my second equation and therefore solve for unknowns so sum of forces in the y direction will be equal to zero and don't forget your sign convention. I always use the right hand rule in order to get that. So in this particular case, I will get minus 80, which is the force right there. And it's causing the thing to rotate in the opposite direction. So that's why it's negative. And that multiplies the distance. The distance will be this guy right here, which is 1.5. And then the next force will be plus FBC because I'm assuming that it goes up therefore it goes to the positive um, side of the right hand rule 
um, then that FBC has to be multiplied by the distance, which is this whole thing. It's the distance from the y-axis to the to where the force is applied, so that would be three, and this is equal to zero. And then this would be my second equation. Once I have that, I can you know solve the two equations. So solving the two equations I will get that AZ will be equals to 40 pounds and then the next one will be FBC which is actually 40 pounds too all right so now that I have that I just need to ask myself what else do I need so if I if I just go back to the to the picture right I know that I already got this I already got this I already got this because it was equal to zero and I already got this so the only thing that I need to find is a couple moment right here so therefore the next um, the next way to solve this will be by doing a sum of forces in the x direction because that's where max is so if i do that i will get and don't forget your sign convention you know if it's you by using the right hand rule so i'm assuming that max is positive so i will put max right here this is equal to zero don't forget so max plus 40 which is fbc and I will have to multiply that by the distance, which is, you know, from the axis to where the force is applied, which is 6. And then the next one will be the 80, which goes in the negative side because of the right-hand rule that, that it's been multiplied by 6 as well, you know. And this is equal to 0. If I solve this, I will get that MAX, the couple moment, will be equal to 240. And that's it. With that, we solve the exercise. Guys, I think like if I, if I want to draw a conclusion from this whole problem, it's that it's how to play with the equations that you have. You know, you need to have a plan when you read the statement, when you look at the forces. And with that, uh, we conclude chapter number five. Like I told you, it's a very short chapter, one of the shortest in the book. It's just an extension of chapter number four. Um, and you know, I think it's very straightforward. Please, if you have any questions, send me an email. Um, you can also leave some comments if you, if, you, if you have more specific questions and I will try to answer them all. Or if you need a one-on-one meeting, let's do that. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.